Hello, Vetfolio Voice peeps. I'm so glad you're back. And in this episode, sponsored in part by Verbac, we're talking about one of my favorite topics, and that is veterinary dentistry. I mean, hooray deep. More importantly, we're talking about how to involve the whole team in talking about and participating in dental care for our pets. I feel so strongly about this, especially considering how important dental health is to our pets' overall health. Joining me is the dental diva herself, Mary Berg, who is an amazing resource, both in the technical aspects of dentistry and the client communication portions of it as well. Here's a little bit more about her and then we'll get into our talk. Mary Berg is a charter member of the Academy of Veterinary Dental Technicians. She earned a bachelor's in biology and microbiology at South Dakota State University, an associate in laboratory animal science at Redlands Community College, and another associate in veterinary technology from St. Petersburg College. She received her veterinary technician specialty in dentistry in 2006. For nearly three decades, Mary worked in research where she specialized in products aimed at improving oral health in companion animals. She's also served as a practice manager and dental specialist at a general practice. She teaches veterinary technology and she's president of Beyond the Crown Veterinary Education, a veterinary dental consulting service. Mary is actively involved in the National American Veterinary Technician Association, the Academy of Veterinary Dental Technicians, and the Kansas Veterinary Technician Association. She served on committees for the AVMA and the American Academy of Veterinary State Boards. She's authored and co-authored over 70 publications. She was fantastic to talk to. I'm so happy to have her. Let's get into our talk. All right, so I'm here with Mary Berg today talking about dental care and the approach that we take to dental care in talking to clients and involving the whole veterinary team in, in helping with all of this. So Mary, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. And I guess let's just jump right in, kind of start at the beginning Essentially, how do you start talking to people about dental care? You know, I'm thinking about a new puppy and talking to clients about taking a preventative approach to caring for their dog's teeth. Well, when I first started really talking about educating our clients, I used to say, let's start talking about it at that first puppy or kitten visit. And then working in practice, I realized that first puppy or kitten visit can be really overwhelming For most pet owners, they're like, you know, deer in the headlights. Oh my God, I have to do all this stuff, right? So actually, I really now start talking about it more at the second or third puppy visit when we, you know, they've gone through the, you know, crate training and potty training and and flea and tick control vaccine cycles and stuff like that. We're really going to start concentrating at it at an early age. We talk about the fact we just want that pet owner to get used to having the animal's mouth handled. And getting in there, whether it's just a finger, you know, wrapped with a with a, a tissue or something, but just wiping those teeth and getting the animal used to having their mouth messed with, I guess, is what I really want to say. Um, we continue to talk about it each and every visit, every time we see the pet owner. I think the more we can talk about it with the pet owner, the more they realize that, hey, this is something that must be pretty important because I'm hearing it every time I go to the vet. So I want to start early, set them up with a a good plan that they can do with their pet, get their patient or their their pet, excuse me, ready to have that mouth messed with and looked at and things like that. So that it makes our job as veterinary professionals a little easier when the pet comes into the practice. They're not not like, oh, my God, what are you doing? Why are you uh, sticking your fingers in Why are you doing this to me? Oh, my God, my (laughs) life is over. Um, We don't want that to happen. But it also really starts hitting home with the pet owners that this is something we need to start early so that this pet can keep their teeth their entire life. I totally agree with you. Definitely about the deer in headlights at the first (laughs) puppy visit. I have like four main topics that I cover at that first puppy visit. And yes, usually that's like, you know, all we can handle at that moment. There's so much going on. So I love kind of incorporating it over time, like you're talking about. And then also what you said about talking about it routinely, because it is one of those things. It's a, it's a big undertaking one to do a dental cleaning, but then to get people on board with doing routine dental care at home and in the clinic. So you kind of have to like plant that seed 
and then continue to just, you know, reinforce it over time. I think that's a great approach. Another thing you can think about too, is if you do do any kind of, you know, puppy or, or kitten packets or, you know, goodie bags, put some information in there about oral health. Start early, give them a chance to maybe review that at home, even if we don't talk about it at that first visit, but that gives them a chance to realize that there's something going on here we need to see. So including that information early is very important. Yes, yes, I totally agree. And, you know, one of the other things I I definitely want to make sure we're talking about is a team approach to dental care. So, you know, like we talked about, this is something that needs to be taken into account early and often. How do you view the roles of each team member from a CSR to a technician, assistant, veterinarian? You know, what, how do you view our individual roles in the discussion for dental care for pets? Well, everybody has to be excited about it. Everybody has to understand the importance of of good dental care. You don't have to be the rock star you know, super cheerleader that I am about dentistry, but you really do have to understand how important it is that we keep that pet healthy. And when it comes to the CSRs, they really are kind of the first and last impression of the practice. And, you know, having been in practice, I know that there's many times that client may go up and say, hey, doctor recommended I do this to my pet. Would you do it if it was your pet to this, you know, the CSR? And if they say, "Mm -mm, nope, no way, it's not going to happen. So we have to have them on board and really understanding how important it is. So maybe if you have someone who might be on the fence, maybe offering them a dental cleaning for their pet, then they can be that cheerleader because now all of a sudden they're six-year-old, you know, Lapa Opso is actually acting like a puppy again. So those kinds of things can help get them on board. But they really do have to understand that this isn't something we're just doing for the fun of it. It really does matter in the pet's overall well-being. I also, when it comes to the CSRs, when it, you know, when it comes to having, you know, the, the phone shoppers that call every practice, I never had our CSRs give a price over the phone for a dental procedure. We kind of gave them a, a script that basically said, you know, every patient's different. We would love to see your pet for an evaluation prior to, you know, giving you an idea of what we're looking at so that we can go ahead and get you a more accurate treatment plan for what's going on with your patient instead of saying, you know, it's going to be X number of dollars because we know that that may not be true. Right, um, expressing the value. Yeah, and expecting the value. And then when it comes to, obviously, the technician, I'm going to be the big cheerleader for they are the ones who are not only the client educators and pet advocates, but also probably dentistry is one of the areas that technicians can really take ownership of. It is something that we're going to do the majority of the procedure. We should be doing the majority of the procedure. That includes, you know, cleaning and x-rays and or radiographs, excuse me, and everything we need to do for that pet. And we can really be the one who's the, the client educator when we're doing discharge appointments, even talking to them beforehand, going over a treatment plan with them. Assistants, they're very, very important because they're going to be helping that veterinary technician and veterinarian doing the procedure. That can be everything from assisting and getting the radiographs done to charting, to just kind of being there, not only to help out, but to also make sure that all the equipment is ready to go, as well as autoclaved and cleaned and things like that after the procedure. Now, the veterinarian, you're the team leader, okay? (laughs) You got to believe in it, all right? And I'm hoping that you are encouraging your teams to get as much education as they can about dentistry. We know that it's been lacking in both veterinary colleges as well as veterinary technician programs, and we really want them to get the best education they can. So you're not only going to be the one doing the diagnosis and the treatments for that patient, but you're also going to be the one that's encouraging the rest of the team to get the CE they need so that they can be doing an efficient and quality job of dental procedures. I love that role as a veterinarian. I I am very excited about dentistry. I love dentistry, but you know, in getting the whole team excited about it, I mean, it's a, it's a big procedure. It's a big undertaking, especially if we're doing extractions and stuff like that. So yeah, I would 
love to have that role of, you know, encouraging and facilitating people getting more education to where we can continue to work as a team. And I think you just said something there that that kind of triggered a thought for me was, you know, doing the extractions. I think the goal is that we get to the point in practices that we are doing preventative dental care instead of where we're having to do a lot of treatment. Yes. Um, where we're doing, you know, those mouths with 15 extractions. We need to have that patient in early and often so that we don't get to that degree of periodontal disease where, you know, the teeth are just coming out of the mouth, you know. So I think that's where getting the whole team on board is so important so that we can start really getting that pet owner set up for regular dental cleanings and very thorough dental cleanings. It's not just popping the stuff off the crowns of the teeth, you know, it's looking for issues, cleaning below the gum line, all of those things we need to do. But if we can do that more at the stage one, stage two, we don't have to get to three and four, you know, where we're doing those massive, long three, four hour procedures, because we are now being proactive, and we're getting that pet owner in early. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm really trying to push and trying to educate people to get that started early. So we don't have to have those mouths where we're doing those, you know, 15 extractions and everybody is exhausted and tired by the end of the day and, and things. So being proactive, being starting early, often and frequent, we don't have to get there. Yes, yes, absolutely. And then they have you know, like a heart murmur or yes. um, early renal failure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. having to, to make decisions of mm-hmm. like, oh, how do I balance this yes. anesthesia? Because it's going to be, like you said, three or four yes. hours. So yes, I agree. Much easier to come in on the preventative side of mm-hmm. things. And so speaking of prevention, let's talk about home dental care and talking to pet owners about home dental care. You know, what kind of options do you think are really the most realistic, the best for pet owners? And and how do you talk to them about that? Well, we all know the gold standard is toothbrushing. Okay. That is going to probably be the most effective way to keep the oral cavity clean. Unfortunately, Right now in the United States, probably only about 2% of pet owners brush their pet's teeth. So we need to make sure we're offering other options to that pet owner that is something they're going to probably be more than likely willing to do. We have to really assess our pet owners first to see what their ability is, what their interest level is, and what they're willing to do. And then also assess the patient you know, is this a pet that's going to allow this to happen? Do they have any other underlying health issues that we need to address? Things like that. So I think some of the easiest things we can do and the clients are going to be more than willing to do these things are, you know, using some type of a dental diet that is effective. They have to feed their pets, right? Let's feed them a consumable toothbrush. Okay, so using an efficient dental diet or everybody loves to treat our pets, right? We love to give them that daily treat. So let's use some kind of a daily treat that is going to be something that's actually going to be effective and actually clean the teeth during that proceed or during that time. So a lot of times when I'm talking to pet owners and educating veterinary teams about home care, I always recommend really offering two methods to every pet owner, because, you know, there's going to be days that they can do one, and it's probably going to be, let's say they give a treat every day, but then, you know, they're out of town on vacation or whatever, and maybe this is something that the pet watcher can do for them, you know, so we have other things that, you know, they have kind of a backup plan, so to speak, so, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, we need to make sure the pet's going to accept it, the owner's willing to do it, and otherwise we're not effective when it comes to recommending home care. Right. They just end up frustrated with us. Like Mm -hmm. they want me to do all these things and I can't do that. I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And that I think they think sometimes that like, we're going to judge them if they come in and are like, I can't do this stuff. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like not everybody can for, for various reasons. You can talk to us about it. It's okay. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so important to, you know, have a discharge appointment with every patient. And this is a technician appointment. Okay, I'm always I'm always about having a technician appointments, but have them go through not only what happened in the procedure, but also what kind of options they have for home care. 
and then maybe even have a follow-up appointment, you know, a week or two after the procedure, especially if there's been any type of oral surgery, we want to assess the mouth, see if it's healing. And that can be a technician appointment also. But that also then gives that pet owner, even if they haven't had any surgery done, they can come back and say, okay, you recommended X for home care. It's just not working. My dog hates it. He swallows it whole. I don't know what the heck I'm trying to do with this. And that gives you an option within a few weeks of the procedure to come up with something else for that. It shouldn't be a cookie cutter. Everybody walks out the door on this and this, you know, we have to kind of feel out what the pet's willing to do. So we have to have kind of a arsenal, I guess, in our practice of things that we can recommend for dental home care. And that that two one to two week follow up appointment is so important for that that we can go ahead and say, okay, what's working, what's not working. Absolutely. I feel like you're, you're in my head here because you're moving (laughs) like through my questions beautifully. I feel like you just segued perfectly into my next question. And it's about pitfalls when we're communicating with clients. You know, we, we've all had those appointments either like you're talking about, we recommended some care and it's not working or, you know, you're talking to somebody about dental care and I, I don't know, I feel like I've definitely had those where I walk out and I'm like, I lost them. Like we were not on the same page. We didn't connect and I didn't get the message across that I wanted to. So what do you feel like are some of the biggest pitfalls we run into when we're trying to communicate with clients about, you know, home dental care or dental procedures, the whole, the whole nine yards? I think sometimes it's just um, that we tend to, and I'm, I'm, extremely guilty of this, but kind of a data dumper where we're just going to say, this is what you need to do, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Instead of really engaging that client and pet owner in a conversation, find out what they know about dentistry. What are they, what are they doing already? Okay. You know, are they doing something at home? Maybe it's not something we know isn't really the best for their pet. We can validate what they're saying to us. We don't have to agree when we validate. We can say, I understand why you want to do that, but are you willing to let me talk to you about maybe why that's not such a a good idea? And then we kind of have this conversation. And when we have more of a conversation with the pet owner, they tend to have more buy-in. They feel more empowered when we're doing those recommendations or or even giving them a quote-unquote prescription, you know, for home care, because now they've had a little bit of of understanding, a little bit of say in that conversation, and they feel like they've been heard. And I think that takes a little bit of practice to feel how to do those conversations well, but I think it can be a great team meeting. And I always love to make other people do play acting. I'm not a fan of it myself, but I like to make (laughs) other people do it. Um, But having those conversations in a team meeting to help really people understand how to have a conversation with the pet owner and not just say, this is what you must do daily find out what they're able to do, and then really just have that back and forth with the client. And leave the door open for them to maybe come back, like you said, and say, hey, this isn't working. Yes. Can we talk about these other options? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, you talked about data dumping. I'm also guilty of that. And I can actually think of a scenario yesterday where I was explaining something and my brain went on autopilot and explained it in, you know, the words that always come out of my mouth. And I had to backtrack. So I was like, wait, 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 that doesn't apply to this patient. And that's, that's really important. And and I always try to remind people when we're talking about something and whether it be dentistry, flea and tick control, heartworm prevention, whatever we're talking about, which we do daily, right? Multiple times a day. And we're like, oh my God, if I have to talk about this one more time today, I'm going to just, you know, not be cool with it. Right. We have to always have in the back of our minds that, yeah, we might be tired of talking about it, but we have to remember it might be that client's first time hearing it. So we really have to always have that, you know, kind of like, hey, this is exciting stuff. Yeah, it's flea and tick. Yay. Uh, But we really want to have that conversation with them so that they feel that, that we're excited about it. And, and let them know, remember, just basically what I'm trying to say is remember that the client may not have heard this before. So what you're saying is really important to them. So that's <laughs> kind of my take home from this is just always keep that in mind. I think that's great advice. It's super important. Treat, treat every client and patient as an individual. Yes. And try not to let your brain go on autopilot. That's right. It's hard. It's hard because it sometimes it I do. Sometimes it goes off in its own it little mind. It runs away with us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So, you know, we're talking about preventative care at home and client buy-in. One of the most common reasons I hear people declining dental care, in particular dental cleanings, is of course due to cost. So how do you talk to people about the cost of, say, a dental cleaning and really express the value in that procedure? Well, I think that's something that in our profession, we tend to always jump to that as the reason people don't want to do something. Okay. Um, there was actually a focus group out. Uh, I don't remember exactly when this was done, but we found out that cost really was much lower down the list than we assumed it was. Oh where goodness, we assume it's more. the first thing, right? Yeah. Um, most of the time, the reason that people don't go forward with the procedure is because they don't understand the procedure or they don't understand the value of that procedure. So if they don't understand why a dental cleaning is important and what is actually going on in a dental cleaning, they're going to say, oh, they're just going to take my dog back there and they're going to brush his teeth and it's going to cost me $500. You know, they don't understand what is all involved in this procedure. So, you know, that's one of the reasons they don't go forward. Another is they may not have heard you. And a lot of that is because we tend to use slang in veterinary medicine that we assume our clients know what we're talking about because we use it every day, right? We know what this means. And we walk into a room and we talk to the pet owner and we say, hey, your dog needs a dental. And your owner is going to look at you like dental what? Dental is an adjective. Most people don't really, we don't call our, our dentist and say, hey, it's time for my dental. Can you schedule that for me? You know, so we need to really use terms that the client understands. And maybe it, they don't understand all of it, but it sounds a little bit more important. So one of my favorite is COHAT, which is Comprehensive Oral Health Assessment and Treatment. And I know that's a mouthful, but it really is what we're doing when we're doing a dental cleaning. It could be a dental professional dental cleaning. It could be periodontal therapy. It could be whatever term you want to use, but something other than dental. And I challenge practices to try to eradicate that term from the vocabulary. It's one thing to be using it in the back. You know, you walk in in the day, how many dentals do I have today, right? <laughs> um, but if I use that term in front of a client, they're going to look at us like, I'm not sure what you really mean. So using a term when we're talking to the clients, but it, you know, if we use it in back, it slips into the vocabulary with the client. So, you know, everybody has, a, has heard of a swear jar, have a dental jar. And then by I the end it. of the week, buy pizza, because <laughs> everybody's said it enough times that you can buy a pizza at the end of the week. And I'm guilty of it. I still use it sometimes. But switching that vocabulary helps a great deal. And also talking about the fact that when we look at, when we're getting back to your question about how do I get that client to say yes, it's really sitting down with them when you're presenting the treatment plan or estimate. Not a big fan of the term estimate. Right. Um, but and and when we present that, I actually recommend sitting with them, not leaning over a table, not just handing them the piece of paper and say, here's a treatment plan for the dental procedure, because they see that bottom number and they're gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little trick is to if you're sitting there with them, hold your hand over the bottom number and kind of point and say, this is why we need to do pre-anesthetic medication. This is why we need to do pre-anesthetic blood work why anesthesia is important, blah, 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 blah. And then by the end of it, you really you cover, you know, uncover that bottom number. And I can't tell you how many times I've had pet owners say, wow, that isn't near as expensive as I thought it was going to be. Because we've gone through why each step is important. And now they understand the value of the dental procedure and why everything is more expensive. I also compare a lot of what we do in veterinary medicine to what happens in human medicine in human dentistry, you know, yes, we don't need to be anesthetized, or at least most of us don't need to be anesthetized <laughs> to have our tooth clean. There are some of us. <laughs> some of us do. But, you know, so it isn't going to be, it's going to be a little bit more expensive because of that. But a lot of people don't really even understand how much a dental cleaning costs at their dentist because of insurance. So they don't realize what the actual cost is. So it is something that we compare any type of dental procedure I'm doing in a patient, I'll compare it to what may, they may have had experienced in a, vet, in, in a human dentist. So using those kinds of things. And then I also put the ball in their court. 
not to use a basketball analogy, but I will. I let them know that that dentistry, um, dental procedures are not one and done. We just don't do it once and we're done with it. Again, we get our teeth cleaned every six months, every year. So I'll put it in their court saying, okay, we've done this procedure today on, on you know, Jax. And now Jax's teeth are clean. What are we going to do at home to keep that clean so that maybe we don't have to see him in six months, eight months, or a year. Maybe we can stretch that out because you're doing such a great job at home on dental cleaning and, and keeping that mouth healthy. So a lot of times I'll just kind of throw that into their court a little bit and let them, you know, say, hey, this is kind of important because yeah, it did cost a bunch, you know? So those are some things that we can do to really get our pet owners to understand how important the, the dental procedure is and get over that kind of the, oh my God, it's always the cost. I think a lot of that is in our heads yeah, there's going to be clients who complain about the cost. Don't get me wrong. But I think once they understand the value of it, they're more than willing to go through with it. Absolutely. I feel like the light bulb just came on when you said that, because because I was the one who posed the question of, you know, I feel like they decline it due to cost. And now I'm now I'm like my wheels are turning. I'm going, maybe you're right. Maybe I just think it's because of cost. And, you know, we're not doing as good a job as I think we are expressing the value and really sitting down with them to explain exactly what's going on. Uh-huh. Okay, so we have the the treatment plan, you know, the estimate, so to speak, in front of them, and we're going over line by line, and we're and we're getting buy in, and then we get to oral surgery extractions. Um, I I have certainly encountered some people who are just really attached to their pet's teeth, and the idea of extracting a tooth is they just can't imagine this for their poor furry friend. How do you how do you talk about extractions with people? Because I guarantee you the comment you're getting is, how are they ever going to eat again? Yes, yes. Because and I say, I've pulled teeth. all of the teeth in some dog's mouth and they're still eating hard food because they weren't chewing it to begin with. Yes, and, and I do go through that, you know, how a dog usually inhales their food instead of actually eats it and chews yeah. it. But a lot of it is, I, I talk about the terms pain and infection, okay? Because when we have a tooth that needs to be surgically removed, it's probably because it's a painful tooth. Okay. And we talk about the fact that, yes, there's things we might be able to do, but it's going to be really hard to remove the pain that's happening in that mouth. Now, and a lot of times I'll just say, you know, they're going to eat better than they have in weeks because they're no longer hurting anymore. And, you know, it is, we've, we've had a few people that were pretty attached to teeth, but a lot of times I will, if I can, during the procedure, give them a call and kind of explain it to them during the, you know, real quick, say, hey, this is what's going on. And even if I have to, we could either text them or email them the x-ray so that they could see what's going on on that radiograph. What's happening? Why does this thing look painful? There's some other things that, you know, I'll even tell stories. I love to tell stories, but, you know, I've had a, a patient who was a regular patient of mine who was a chihuahua. So, Enough said, right? Right. Okay. Um, every time, every time Scooter came in, Scooter needed a tooth removed, you know, or two or ten. And uh, <laughs> he came in um, at one point, and I just looked at his owner. I said, you know, I think the doctor's really recommending that we do a full mouth extractions on this dog. And she totally panicked. And we sat down, we talked about it, and she said, okay, fine. And I think what really hit home for me was at the the follow-up appointment, maybe I can't remember, it was a week or two weeks post-op. She came into the exam room with me and she was in tears. And I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, this can't be good. But they were happy tears. And she says, this is the first time since he was a year old that he has let other members of my family hold him. Oh my gosh. And I kind of smiled and I said, that's because he's not hurting anymore. He's gotten rid of all that oral infection he had going on. He feels good. He was still eating. Okay. Probably eating better than he had in a long time. And that just warmed my little heart, you know, to hear that. Um, And I actually ran into this pet owner several years later and she looked at me and she goes, oh my God, you're the one who saved Scooter. And I'm like, I mean, it was in a totally non-veterinary setting. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and then it dawned on me who I was talking about. That sounds but, like me, but what? Yeah. Yeah. Who, what? Huh? But realistically, it was so rewarding to have someone who really, truly saw that miraculous change within just a week or two in her pet being willing to let other people in her family, 
you know, hold him and, and play with him and things like that because he wasn't hurting anymore. So sometimes I use stories like that with pet owners because then they understand that I'm in this to really help their pet. It's not you know, I'm going to make, you know, $500 for my practice today. It's I want to do what's in the best interest for that patient to make them happy and healthy the rest of their lives. Because quite frankly, when we do a full mouth extraction, I put myself out of a job. Right. right? Yeah. You, I mean, there's, there's no there, more oral care to do. Going on, right. So what am I going to do? Um, but yeah, so I mean, it is something that we, we want to make sure that those pet owners understand how important it is to the pet's well-being and, and how they feel afterwards. And the more of these cases, I feel like that, that we as a veterinary team do, the more stories like that you hear. And therein is like one of the biggest reasons why I just, I I'm right there with you. Like, I feel so strongly about it. I get excited about it because it, it does warm your heart when they come back and they're like, they feel better. I didn't even know how bad it was until I fixed it. And now, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're happier and they're healthier and, you know, blood work is going back to normal and all this crazy stuff that happens. Yeah. And, you know, when they tell me that he's just old, you know, and that's why he's slowing down. Well, he's five. He's not old. Oh, good. You know, yeah. you know, I mean, it's like he's hurting. Let's get this cleaned up. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Mary, I have truly enjoyed all of your insight into, you know, just the communication process and the team approach to dentistry. Do you have any resources in particular that you would point the veterinary team towards for either education for ourselves or client resources, anything like that, that you feel like has really worked well in the past? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that that's something that we're always looking at is ways to educate our teams. And one of those is Verbeck is putting together the, the dental authority training for, for team members. And I think something like that can be very helpful for your team to really understand how to communicate. And of course, any other time there's a CE opportunity that involves communication, whether it be, you know, sometimes we get so hung up on the medical part of it, we forget how to communicate to our pet owners. So anytime we see a a CE opportunity that really talks about helping the, the pet owner understand and communicating is so important to them. So there's a lot of them out there, but, you know, I knew, I know that the uh, dental authority with Verbeck is going to be an awesome one for people to look into so excited for this episode to come out and for people to hear it because I just think you have such good insight, such good advice for everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Are there any final thoughts you want to share? No, but it's every tooth, every time, or I should say every mouth, every time, every time you see a patient in your practice, no matter what they present for, we really need to take a look at that mouth. And when we start doing that, pet owners realize, hey, this is important, but I don't care if they come in for a a torn toenail. Let's look at the teeth and see what's happening and really just have that conversation with that pet owner early and often. More good advice. I love it. I love it. Thank you again. (laughs) Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You know me, I love to talk teeth all day. Me too. Me too. We're a good pair. (laughs) All right, everyone, I hope that got all of you excited about talking about dentistry in your practice. I'm biased because I love dentistry and always want to talk about it, but I really enjoyed this talk. A huge thank you to Mary Berg for joining me today. Thank you to Verback for sponsoring this episode, and thanks to all of you for joining us. If you'd like to find more episodes like this, click on the education tab on Vetfolio's webpage. As always, we'd love to hear your input on this session, as well as ideas for topics you'd like to hear from us in the future. Feel free to reach out to me at dvm at vetfolio.com. You can also visit my Facebook page at Dr. Cassie DVM, and you can find me on LinkedIn. And remember, if one animal is better off because of you today, it's a great day. <laughs>